Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle Bookshelf Tour of Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. Now, it's not all of my Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. For some weird reason, they're not in my shelf for their books. So you probably was reading them sometime, put them down, and they're somewhere else. So at this point, I can't find them. Still, Pulp, the Process Edition. I love this. Now, I've got the original, Pulp, came out. Now, I'm a bit with the, these ones. And I'm just going to show you one of the books. Let's just see. It's quite a thin book. Great. I mean, it's one of the best books. I mean, I'm not complaining about the books, but it is quite thin. And sometimes this part of me always thinks, if only they brought it out in this sort of format, the process edition, they brought all their books out like that, maybe at the same time. I know that's probably not practical, but it would be nice because I'd just buy this version each and every time. The process edition. This is pulp. You think it's a western? It isn't a western. It's about pulp stories, detective agencies, and lots more. Lots of background. It's just brilliant. Really brilliant. But the process edition means you get everything. You get the kitchen sink with this. You get obviously a great introduction. You also get the script. You get the various, uh, all the drawings. And I just love looking at these things. It's just great just seeing how it's done. The development of the story. Thumbnails, lots and lots of background wings, the ideas for the covers, just everything is thrown into this about the colour process, the inking, how it's done, what processes he uses, the pens, every single thing. Always and also of course the colour guides there. Look at that. Just I think actually in many ways they could bring out a comic book like that. And that'd be just beautiful, absolutely stunning. But obviously it would help with the story, but it just looks stunning as a visual design. I think it's just great. And you've course got the finished book. And as I mentioned, it does start out, and I, when I first got this, I thought, oh, not this one, but the original, of course, that it's a Western. Got the Western on the front, I thought, oh, it's going to be Western. Now, I think the quality of the cover in here is much nicer than the original. I think they've done some slight updates, to my mind. But I just think, but it doesn't remain in the Western. You've got uh, New York. I assume it's in New York, anyway. I'm just saying that in New York. Might not be, it might be Los Angeles for I know. But wherever, it was certainly 1930s, it moved forward, more, more likely. But, but you do go backwards and forwards. Now I haven't, obviously I read the story quite a while back, and now Wither is one that's, I just say that, and it's of course probably not, mm, doesn't sound back either, where it's New York. Without checking, I'm not going to go. But still, this is everything. And I just think it's just great, absolutely brilliant. So the America that only ever existed in adventure stories, the best graphic novels of 2020. And I think it's just amazing. And I wish they'd bring them all out in process edition. If they brought this out for all of their different, say, these type of ones, I'd be over the moon. Just great. That's brilliant. This one, Cruel Summer, is excellent as well. Now I bought the, the original copy. I've got quite a few of these books that with obviously bits and pieces missing in my comic collection. So that's why I got the books. Sometimes like Fatal, I've got all the comics, but I haven't got the Fatal Deluxe Editions because they brought those out. But I think looking online just now, they're quite expensive. So I'm not going to get those until they maybe come out in a special. And also it's a big collection. So it's about 500, 440 pages each, two volumes. But this one's Cruel Summer, Ed Brubaker. The colouring is just great. Like all of them. I think the colouring is just brilliant. And as always with these ones, these stories, starts with just a simple mistake. It's always a basic mistake, goes into a house, and all the events that happen after that, all from that. And of course, one thing I always find sometimes with these, they go back to the 1970s, lots of 1970s, 1980s, that sort of thing. And But it goes backwards and forwards, bounces around. So it's quite, I always think one day, hopefully they bring out a massive timeline book showing all events and all fitting it all together because I find it slightly confusing with Lawless, etc, etc, et cetera, where they all are over time. But the colour and everything about these books, just superb, just absolutely beautiful, really, really. But it is violent. So if you're into violent books, you'll love it. If you're not into violent books, you probably won't like it. It's like whenever I mention about, so I'm watching uh, The Last of Us at the moment, and in time soon I mentioned that, so all my friends, the eyes glaze over, it's a zombie sort of thing. It isn't really zombies, it's about humans again, it's just what we do and situations and problems. And I think it's brilliantly done, I think so far, I've watched two episodes so far, thoroughly enjoyed them. <laughs> Maybe everyone else doesn't like it, I don't know, I haven't looked at the reviews, so. You've got back, obviously, afterward there, always good. 
Also, you got some. I love the fact they include all the covers. I love the covers. In some ways, it's a pity they include those. In many ways, I would love to see them as poster size as well, because I have a massive volume of this. That would be brilliant. An artist edition with all these covers. Now, I'm not so much about artist edition with, I don't know if they'd work actually, because I don't know how big the pages are with these ones. I just feel that the artwork, if it was blown up even more, maybe look a bit crude. I don't know. I'm just guessing. I'm just... But I think these, I assume these covers would look superb as a massive posters. One thing also, another thing that's not included in these is that, I love that, I mean, all the, obviously the <laughs> dollars, I was going to say, pounds. No, it's dollars all over the floor. Again, some more ones there. Is that they don't include all the essays. Quite a lot of these magazines, not all, not every single issue includes essays, but you've got essays and quite often what Ed Brubaker, I think it's brilliant articles, that he's reading or he's obviously seen on TV. It's really great, fascinating to read though. Obviously a bit dated now because of course he talks about things a long time ago. Relatively long time ago. 2018, 2017 feels like eternity, I know. But you've got there epic tale of tragedy handed down from generation to generation and that is quite often the stories there's quite a lot of that sort of generational there's something that happens from goes all the way through and we learn more and that's why it would be nice to have a at some point sort of a full-on history explaining all the ins and outs because to me i must admit coming to it backwards and forwards i get to the point where i think hmm what's this character from this but they are great i really now for me i would like to see more development of her anna the Ghost in You. Now, I have got the latest one, and that was one ones I was looking for. I can't remember what it's called now, but whatever it was called, it's just come out a couple of months ago. I can't find it anywhere. I've got it, read it, thoroughly enjoyed it. But I don't know which pile I put it on. I must have put it somewhere, but I've just been looking all morning and I just couldn't find it. But I just, just is great. She's a character that's turned up in a few of the reckless stories. And I really like her, and I think it would be nice to that they did a little bit more with her. And of course, it doesn't matter if but anything happens because of course what happens in a lot of these books, they always go back in time. So they suddenly do a story like 1960s or 1970s with the character. So they just go backwards and forwards all over the place and just slotting in various things. So I, I think it's just a great little tale. Again, the colouring is superb. Now I assume this is Jacob Phillips again. I think it's generally Jacob Phillips. Yes, Jacob Phillips there. And I just love it. Absolutely brilliant. Again, unfortunately, it doesn't include any essays or any articles. It's just got an afterword. And that's a slight disappointment about these books. And that's why I thought the process edition was brilliant. Real nice. Oh, there it is. Follow me down. Yeah, I've got that one. But like I said, I can't find it. I've looked everywhere. It must be around the house somewhere. But it's quite a dramatic book, as all of them. Obviously, it was released, it says there, in October. And I don't know if there's any more coming out. I assume that there's some... There's other couple of books that have been listed, but that one, I don't know if there's any more reckless ones. I assume there will be, but there's an afterword there. Fourth book in the series, but I would like to see just a little bit more. I'd be happy to pay a little bit more as well for a process edition. Ones with a lot more for sort of essays and things. The things I really liked in the comics. I love those things. Get the comic and I enjoyed going to, I quite often read the story very rapidly sometimes and go back to it later. But I just couldn't wait to get to read the articles about sort of some his collection of film noirs. Quite often I'd go, oh wow, I have never seen that film. So I just would look, go online, quickly try and find a DVD or whatever, or remember put it down on my list to have a look for it at a comic convention or something. Those sorts of things, just to find those sort of films, or maybe just look at the trailer on uh, YouTube, just to find out what it was like. Because sometimes they're quite obscure, some of these film noirs. They just, you, you look on and find, hang on, DVD hasn't. And more, normally what happens, I find that it's on Talking Pictures or something. It's like two weeks ago and you think, oh, <laughs> could have watched it on that two weeks ago. But of course now it'll probably never be shown again for a couple of months. But this one's Criminal. And this one, and I'm going to say, is Volume 1. This is a great collection. This came out ages ago. This is the reprint of the collection. I don't know if it's the same as the original version. No idea, I didn't get them. So, but they've got lots of different stories in here. And I'm just gonna show, they were all trade paperbacks. All came out in trade paperbacks, these stories. And let's just find the list. 
probably listed them. I love that. It's very weird to sort of my how I do my Photoshop uh, graphics. I do a lot of that sort of design, that sort of weird sort of lighting effects, blurring gradients and things like that. I love it. Oh, and this sort of thing, smeary effects, like video effects and after effects. So sort of artifacts is a great tool for that. But anyway, coward, lawless, dead and the dying. Actually, you can see the characters called lawless. Again, all these sort of characters turn up quite regularly and extras afterward again again full of just great artwork and again very violent so if you're the violence and lots and lots of, again another violence scene there's lots of violence in this more violence but the back it's got a bit of, sort of unusual it's got lots of i love these these are brilliant drawings again like i say i'd love to see them in poster form be really great look at that just stunning the color work obviously awesome wells there love that this one touch of evil brilliant film charlton heston film oh blast of science it's sort of ones that i think blast of science i've never seen that it might be readily available on american tv i don't know touch of evil was on uh, talking pictures a couple of weeks ago i'm, I'm quite certain or oh, neo noir you see michael kane etc you can recognize the various characters oh i can't recognize all the characters Still, TV cops and movie tough guys. <laughs> okay, I'm going to fail miserably on everyone say, oh, I know who they are. <laughs> I don't know. No, anyway. And you've got the usual brilliant sections that I always love. Process. I love these ones. Criminal's got scripts. You've got other bits and pieces. These are collections. Now, the annoying thing is, volume two for some weird reason, hasn't come out. It's been out of print for ages and ages. Volume three came out, volume one came out, no volume two. But someone forgotten about that or something. It's just weird, why no volume two? This was my first one I bought, Fade Out. I think this was the one I bought first, full stop. Because I, I just love film noir and sort of Hollywood, 1948, for that sort of period. And this is a set noir film stuck in endless reshoots just fascinating really good and again he's got a ton of extras at the back which is good i bought the comics as well afterwards but oh i can't even show that bit but there's again lots more violence in this not so bad not as bad you've got all the security chief of the uh, studio those sort of things all dubious characters <laughs> with her and also various other characters obviously the writer and all that sort of stuff the writer without not going to spoil the plot. It is just brilliant. I absolutely, it's my favourite. I absolutely love this. Just beautiful. Look at it. Just stunning artwork all the way through. And what you got? You got, of course, the classic brilliant covers again. I mean, look at that. Just some of these covers again would be brilliant on the wall. And this one, weirdly, they haven't put the actual numbers on it. Maybe they weren't the covers. I'm certain, I think they were the covers. So you got there, all those. Obviously the studio boss looking very, very, very there. And you got the fade out coming in August from Image Comics. So obviously they put the trailer in the back as well, which is nice, of course. You got essays and illustrations, but quite a lot, there's a lot of them that have not been included. I'm certain there were a lot. I vaguely remember reading quite a few of the uh, essays, but they have at least included these amazing images, which are great. And again, you've got various Bits about Farewell, My Lovely, great film, and all this there. Uh, the book, anyway, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. Thumbnails there. Robert Mitchum. It was Robert Mitchum, wasn't it? I'm just trying to think. Suddenly I was thinking, Whoa. I always say these things, and I think. And you've also got, I mean, look at that, just the colour guides, all those colour guides, just brilliant. And Hollywood Land, I love that as well. So that's. Fade Out, really recommended. If you want a great book about Hollywood, 1940s, late 40s, I think this one is just absolute masterpiece. Absolutely brilliant. Really, really recommended. Claimed colour artist. The colouring was superb in that as well. Now this one, this is Volume 3. Volume 3, uh, Criminal, Deluxe Edition. Again, lots of great stories. Really, really enjoyed it. Again, I've read... Actually, I think that by this time I was actually buying them on a regular basis. And this is Colours by, you see, Jacob Phillips and Elizabeth Bright Pfizer. I was buying them on a regular basis, so I had these ones, The Savage Sword of Criminal and The Deadly Hands of Criminal. That was a magazine format. 
they were great. I really love those stories because it really felt like that sort of the old Marvel magazines. It's obviously they were trying to emulate. Now, in some ways, they don't work so well because, of course, it was actually a proper magazine. So if you want to get it in a proper format, you have to buy it in the magazine. And I think they're still relatively easy to find, I think. But here, my heroes have always been junkies. And this was slightly where I got a bit, not complaining, but at the same time, because if you look here, I've already got the book. This. I know it's silly because I've got, I would buy the comic books and then I would complain about the fact they're included in here. But when they're already in the book and then they're in the, another book, a deluxe edition, I think, why did I buy this one? <laughs> but anyway, I'm impatient. So I thought, you know what? And in many ways, I didn't know they were going to bring them out, but I'm happy, happy to get them. They're still great. And I love the stories. And of course, you don't know that Criminal Volume 4 is going to come out. I don't know. No idea. But again, you've got here. Look at that. It looks like an old Marvel sort of magazine. Well, sort of. I don't think all my Marvel magazines, hopefully they're not that sort of brown, in that bad condition. But it, they're great stories. And I even love the fact they include things like the ads and stuff. That they, Obviously not real ads, but they're brilliant. The awesome secrets of deadly kung fu. Your enemies will beg you to stop. That sort of stuff. And you've also got the adverts that claim criminal line moves to image, etc. And you've got lovely letters pages as well, done in the style that you're used to having those sort of things. They're brilliant. And also deadly hands of, of Kung Fu or whatever it was, of criminal. Bad moon rising. Hmm, that sounds like a certain... But still. But it's great. And I love the fact he goes into a comic <laughs> shop, gets this... This comic, De Deadly Hands, I mean, I just love that, because that's the sort of thing I remember going to those sort of comic shops and sort of real sort of... <sighs> long, long time ago, those ones. But this is a good, really good. I love this story. This was a good one. Ellie there. And it, it's, of course, there's some... They're all great criminal. You think the story's going in one way and there's twists and turns. And that's... Just great. I uh, just love this. Oh, this is another one that's just great. Sometimes some of the characters look very quite familiar and you think, oh, that looks a bit like X, Y, Z. But they're not. They're other characters. But just sometimes you sort of think, is that... I love that one. Danny Dagger. Special Collector's Edition Classic. And I love that. So what's the... What, what, heart, armory, is it Harmony? Unfortunately, this one the trouble with this. It's, you can see the problem here. They The gutter's a bit crammed in there. But that one's Harmony Gems. I love those, those old magazines you do pick up and you think, I've never heard of that company before. Harmony Gem could be a real one for all I know. Essays and illustrations again. And again, they always included them most of the time, 99% of the time, in the back. And you'd have like Angels with Dirty Faces by Kim Morgan. Just great. I just would pour over those. And, and I've... <laughs> Bell Comics... I wonder who, I wonder who that is, Hugo, I don't know who that one is, but Hugo, just great again, and look at it, just that again would be a brilliant poster for the wall, and they've got also scripts in here as well, you've also got the prices, the Deadly Hands, obviously they were going to make a series of Deadly Hands, Blind Fury Strikes, also in this issue, Fang, <laughs> the Kung Fu Werewolf, actually I'm surprised they didn't bring out Fang, the Kung Fu Vampire, or Kung Fu, or, you know, I don't know. My, and look at that beautiful one there. Quite often they have this sort of thing, the covers. And I think that would have been a brilliant cover. My Heroes. Actually, I think that cover's better than the cover they went with, personally. I just think that's a, just a great cover. But maybe it doesn't capture the sort of criminal element. I don't know. My Heroes. <laughs> but still. And you've got all the stories on the back you can see there. The Nightcaller, Orphans, except too many novellas. And let's just go on to this one. Bad Weekend. Now this is the one, I've just shown, I've shown that already, the story, yes, oh this one's great, I love this one, it's about an artist, about an artist and all various, it's just great, just brilliant story, ah, lots of people getting, again, getting beaten up or having sort of issues of over years about various treatments and things, yeah, just absolutely stuck out in an out-of-town convention waiting to receive a lifetime achievement award, Hell's Weekend will take him on a dark ride to the secret history of a medium that's always been haunted by crooks, swindlers and desperate dreamers. What more can you want? That's if you're into comic books. I think this one is just absolutely brilliant. But again, I think it's included. Yes, it's in this one. Bad Weekend. And in slightly better format, personally, because you can see the size. 
So if you want to get it in real good super format, I would suggest this one over this one. But still, it's still good. Nothing wrong with that. I don't know if it had the same level of extras in the back. No. See, it didn't that had the extras showing like things, various things. Am I thinking this one? My heroes have always been junkies. Did that have an extra in the back? Maybe I just didn't. No, that didn't have extras in the back. So the game, the criminal deluxe one, wins out again. But this is a great book. But they're all about 120 pages or so. Beautifully drawn, of course. I love the fact that there's no borders around panels. Quite often, you see that in these. I just think that's so. Good, absolutely no problem at all. Not everyone likes that. I think sometimes it uh, needs, but I don't think, it, you know, I think it works perfectly in this. I love the colouring as well. The colouring actually makes it for me. It wasn't colouring, it was just, I don't know if it would work so well if it was, they brought out a black and white one. They brought it out with no colouring. I don't know if I'd like it. I don't know, that's stupid because the story's the same. It would make no sense. Now, I, Unfortunately, I haven't got the Fatal one because of reasons of it's split over two volumes, a deluxe edition. I didn't buy any trade backs, but I have got all the comics. So I've just never bothered buying that. I should. Maybe it comes out in a special super edition. I might. Because it's a brilliant story. I love Fatal. It's sort of HP Lovecraft in sort of weird world. Sort of, I don't know. Very strange, strange story. But this was brilliant. Velvet. Now, this is, of course, not Sean Phillips. This time it's Epting, but you've got Bright Visor again. And the artwork is superb. It's slightly more photorealistic. And I, but I did in, generally enjoy the stories of Velvet. And it's just sort of, sort of black. Black Widow, I suppose. It's not really. But it's, uh, it's very good. Thoroughly enjoyable. You've got all the various characters there. And you can see the style of artwork all the way through it. I enjoyed it. It's, uh, let's see. What does it say anything here? You've got... Like, the thriller that will keep you guessing without making a bombastic show of keeping you guessing. It's cliffhangers abound, etc, etc. Yes. Spy. Spies abound. And again, it's got not actually a huge amount of extras at the back. You've got a few bits of extras. You've got some there, Velvet 1 variant. And also a little bit. But I don't know, because I didn't buy the comic books of this, so I don't know if the extras there were extras in that. I assume... That with a lot of Ed Brubaker ones, that generally they were always extras in the back, and so maybe the Velvet one did have that, but it's one of those ones that quite often, I think I've got a couple of issues of Velvet in comic form, and I can't remember without looking again if they've got them. Maybe I should try and look around for some. They often turn up in the bargain bin ones, which is sad really, because they're really brilliant comics, but that's always the way, you know, it's just... But that's worth checking as well. My heroes have been, have always been junkies. Like Ed Bru I mean, look at that great cover. But I think the cover that they didn't use was even better than that. But I don't know if would it have sold as well. I don't know. It's always the thing. Personally, whatever cover they could have put a blank cover on it, I would have probably bought it. But it's still great. Look at that artwork again. Without, I just I'm, quite often I don't really notice this, but you've got no black borders around any of those. You've got the character there. She's in a. And home there, and they've sort of drug addiction. Tragic souls drawn to needles and pills have been obsession. But there's, of course, lots of twists and turns, as always. You, what you think in the story is not what actually happens in the end. So it's, it does have a lot of... First original graphic novel from the best-selling. I think it's this first one. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. But again, I think it's probably better, of course, in the Criminal Collection. Again, Volume 3. So worth checking out if you want that. But, but the artwork is brilliant. Colouring is superb all the way through it. I loved it. Absolutely brilliant. Well, I said about 120 pages. Unfortunately, they don't put numbers in it, so I'm just guessing it's 120 pages. So you can see there about romantic ideas, etc., etc. And I've got a couple ones. Now, the reckless ones have all ended up much the same format. You can see here, you've got the. Unfortunately, they don't always keep the same format because confusingly, they went for a reckless one which was without a, a subtitle. They're obviously all reckless, blah, blah, blah. But this one's reckless. The other ones are reckless ones, but destroy all monsters and reckless friends of the devil. It's a reckless book just to confuse things. And again, you've got Anna turns up there. So you've got the story there, reckless in the first one. I think she turns up and you can see there. She's in that one. So this one, friend of the devil. Doesn't, she's not on the cover, I can't remember if she's, but there's a whole range of different stories in this. 
without going through flicking through. They're all brilliant. They're all absolutely superb stories. Thoroughly enjoy them. And I assume, because they're not included in any deluxe edition at this present moment, that they will, at some point, be included in a deluxe edition volume four. I'd prob and I will be buying that, I'm certain. Because they'll be slightly bigger. And I'm certain they'll be full of extras and things just to... Anyway, look, I mean, this one is brilliant. This one is reckless. Is this the... Oh, this is the first one. Reckless. Again, I love the covers. The covers are just great. What a lovely, brilliant cover. Very, obviously, you can see the <laughs> sort of thing. It's not going to be a tame comic, isn't it? But again, the artwork is just first rate all the way through it. And the stories, I think, great. You've got here... Read this ring instead of me tell, actually telling you about it. Meet Ethan Reckless. Your trouble is his business for a price. A former 60s radical with scars to prove it. Ethan is part rep, repo man, repro, repo man. I don't know what that means. Doesn't mean anything, obviously, being from the UK. I have no idea. One part a private eye and one part wrecking ball. But when a fugitive from the weather underground, oh, that's it, Days reaches out for help, Ethan will have to face the only thing he really feel, fears anymore, his own past. And quite a lot of these stories are all to do with the past, something that they've done in the past that catches up with them later on. Virtually always that's the case. And this one, Destroy All Monsters. And I suspect this one is probably like this one as well, just without just picking this up. Again, 1988. Ethan and assistant Anna takes on a strange case, digging up the dirty secrets of a Los Angeles real estate agent. Oh, that mogul. But what starts as a deep dive into the life of a stranger? Again, past. It's always sort of going back, sort of going into the past. And you've got all this, like all the films. I'm not going to say any more. But there's, there's the films and that, obviously, again, superb art. Lots of dubious things all the way through it. But again, just superb, superb story. And that's my collection of these brilliant Ed Brady. I think these series are just superb. All of these books, Velvet, My Heroes, all of them. I thoroughly enjoyed reading each and every one of them. I think it's a bad story. that I can't think of any bad stories that they've done. And even ones I've thought, where I've gotten, I thought, you know what, I didn't like that as much. I've gone back and reread it. And thought, you know what? That was absolutely superb. And like I said, these collections, if you're looking for a great selection, I think Criminal Volume 1 and Volume 3 are probably the best to check out for. Because it's just, they've got, it's a comprehensive collection. And of course, Pulp. But if you're interested in comic book art, how to work on comic book art, all behind the scenes, this book, I think, is just first rate. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Fade out, I think, for story from films. Just absolutely brilliant. So, I hope you found this of interest. If you've got any questions, do you buy the Ebru Wagger? Have you ever bought any of his books? Uh, any of, obviously, Sean Phillips as well. Sean Phillips, absolutely great artist. And obviously, Jacob Phillips. I think he's done something recently on his own as well. So, all these sort of things, just brilliant. And I wish they'd bring out more. I wish there were more of these sort of old, classic crime sort of stories done instead of always superhero ones. I'm not saying superheroes, anything wrong with that. But it's great when comics include lots of other areas, such as these sorts of things. And, and it's criminal series being superb. Well, hope you found it of interest. Bye.